to make it all encompassing. So our instructions are right here with the letter of intent. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to kind of read through those and we'll open it up for questions regarding that in just a bit. Wanted to make sure you had the link for today's meeting, which it looks like everyone made it, so that's great. I noticed that my contact information is here. Uh, Amy is also uh, for several of you, uh, several organizations your contact, so feel free to reach out to her also with any questions. Um, we really combed through all of the information we gathered this year from stakeholders. So we were looking at people supported families, our staff at ETOS, our providers. We met with providers probably the first, that was our first gathering of information of what was important to focus on this year. Um, asked our own staff and our board members and got a lot of great information back about what we need in Jackson County. And so that's where our funding priorities came from. Transportation was number one across the board. That is, um, nobody's, nobody's surprised by that, I'm sure. Um, the others were all things that were really highly um, noted over and over again, that inclusion was important and not just inclusion, but getting people out again. You know, COVID really, really affected all of us. Um, and we're still finding it hard for people to get out and about again, like they did before COVID. So we wanted to really press that that's, that's an area that we will support people in. Um, crisis prevention and support. I don't know if how knowledgeable everyone is. I'm sure they are. How many people end up in institutional settings and hospital settings for lengthy periods of time with no one to come get them from a provider agency because of behavioral um, issues. Um, maybe not having trained staff, not knowing how to support people well, not having the right supports in place. So we really want to help with any kind of crisis prevention that 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 we can help with that. Um, and so any kind of application we would we would consider around how do we prevent so many people ending up going to hospitals if there's some things we could do proactively. And then transition's been something that we focused on for the last, I think, four years, three to four years. And um, that continues to be an area that we're um, highly committed to. And then of course, um, safe and equitable housing. I think that's become a real issue here in Kansas City across the board for everyone. So um, it has not left people with disabilities alone either. So um, everyone's been struggling in that area. Of course, we have certain funded services that we were made to support. And that was sheltered employment, community living and other related services. So. These funding priorities are not to say that this is all we will fund. We want all providers to apply. We want even sheltered employment can look at some of these funding priorities and maybe capture something that they could really hone in on uh, this year. Uh, we, we want applications from everyone. So um, this is just some areas that we really felt we have to address in Jackson County. So. And when Tracy said that, that they were legacy programs that we were made to to fund, she means that we were created to fund, not that we were forced to fund. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> I sure didn't mean it to sound like that. So this is a click form. So you really, you can just click in and add the information that's needed. If there's any issues with that along the way, you let us know. Check boxes here for what kind of program you have. Uh, fill in a blank here for a related service. So. And then you just, you write your letter down here and I make that sound really easy, but the paragraph here will kind of describe the kinds of things we're looking for in that letter of intent. Um, so really trying to address that. If you are asking for several programs to be funded, then we're probably gonna need, we're, we are gonna need a separate letter for each one. There may be pieces that you can copy and paste, um, but then when you're really talking about what the difference is in those, those programs that you wanna want funded, uh, make sure and, and fill this piece out um, to fit that program. Are there any letter of intent questions or process questions? I, I just wanted to jump in and say that the letter of intent does not need to be lengthy. It, it 
you need to sell the program. I mean, tell us what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, but you don't have to write um, a thesis on it for sure. A novel is not needed. Mm -hmm. Tracy, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Um, I might have been reading while you were talking, so I apologize. Um, can you explain what number what you what you guys are looking for for the number four on transition? Is it transition from like high school to into adult services? Is it transition from you know a hospital into community living or what's? I am so glad you asked that because transition has really opened up for us. You know we're we're looking at the little little bitty ones that are two and a half three years old going into school for the first time and needing um, to have the right information to have successful schooling. We're talking about people coming to the transition um, at the end of high school and having that go well um, into adulthood. Um, we're, we've been funding a program for a long time that was about keeping people in um, their most least restrictive environment type setting. Um, and that's those, um, um, assessments that have been done by Ability KC that has allowed people to stay where they live and get the necessary supports within that. Um, I think we'd be very open to anything we can do to help with bringing people into community. Um, so so I, I don't think we're closing the doors to anything within regards to transition. I can let Georgie speak to that though, if there's Traditionally, um, the, the big need that's always been identified is, is kids graduating from high school and, and becoming adults. So that's the traditionally understood idea of transition. But we, we were really leaving it deliberately vague because we know that any transition is hard. Transition from work to retirement, you know, transition from uh, community uh, congregate setting to a, a more individualized setting. So if you guys have creative ideas and you wanna do something that you think is just really cool around that, then we wanna hear about it. Great, thank you. There's another document on the ETOS website that goes into detail on the funding, funded, um, excuse me, the funding priorities and it's titled funding priorities description. Yes, it is. Where is that at, Amanda? It's it's in the same spot, so that might be a helpful document. If you look, I was going to open that up, so let me open that up. But it's right here. It's the last one. Wait. Gotcha. Yep. And so that goes into pretty lengthy detail about what do we mean by the funding priority. And then what are just some examples only? <laughs> They're just examples. There's plenty of other ideas that you guys can come up with around what we might uh, be interested in funding. But it kind of gives you an idea then of what um, each thing is. So feel free to download that as you talk amongst your team. Tracy and, and Georgie, I'm not sure which uh, of you would want to um, address the question. It has to do with the request that at least those of us that um, operate the workshops were um, given to provide you with a plan by June 30. So we su we submitted that plan to you. Um, we've not heard back and it would be helpful, I think, for us at least to understand kind of how you're receiving and um, thinking about what we had proposed so that we could then integrate some of that thinking into our letter of inquiry or letter of intent. I'm sorry that I have not communicated back about those. We did receive them. We are waiting on a little bit more documentation. Um, and um, then we're meeting as a, a group with the admin team here at ETOS to discuss those. Um, we do plan to give feedback um, pretty timely now. Now that the funding, this part is 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 done. So um, let's let's just say that I commit in the next two weeks to you hearing something back from us um, regarding those because those should play into what to what you're asking for in the coming years, right? Thank and, you, appreciate that. And Joseph, they're not none of the funding plans are right or wrong. They're your plan moving forward, and they're kind of like a guideline that you and your um, 
your agency relations staff, whether it be Tracy or, or Amy, will be working on and tweaking and talking about over the coming years. And um, we, we are really committed to the idea of continuous improvement and in, in responding to the needs of people as, as they grow and change and as the world changes a little bit too. So just knowing that you guys are open to always looking at ways that the world could be better for people who have disabilities is what we were looking for from, or at least what I was looking for from those plans. And I see that as an ongoing process, not a, you turned it in and it's right or wrong kind of thing. What else? I can show you here on the website, wherever there, that went for me. We'll do it again. You'll have your timeline, which we can look at in a minute, the letter of intent. The Missouri Quality Outcomes is here only because of the uh, funding um, policies and procedures says that it is, but it also would be a helpful tool as you're mm -hmm. sort of thinking through your your strategies around um, the program that you want to have fund or have funded or create. Um, and then the funding policies and procedures have been tweaked to sort of fit this um, this new process we have. So you will want to read through those. There's been some things that uh, have been omitted that really didn't connect with funding applications. So um, hopefully they Hopefully it's a little more clear, some of the, some of the things that's, that's listed in the funding policies and procedures. And then we of course has, have the uh, ETOS funding priorities listed there. So let's pull open that timeline real quick. Um, here we are today, August 3rd. So that'll be, um, hopefully this recording will then be posted just as soon as possible, and I'll send out an email saying that it has been um, for any any of your teammates that may want to review it. Uh, August twenty second is going to be a really important time. Uh, that's when the letter is due, and then by September eleventh, you'll hear back from us about the full application and if that is needed from you. Um, and and some of this will play into just how much money we have uh, set aside. Um, and and the types of um, letters that we get and, and the ideas that people have. So, and then the full proposal will be due October 6th. We plan to have meetings on October 19th and 20th for our committee to meet. But one piece that we're adding this year is as our committee reads the letters of intent and the full application, they may have other questions and we would like to be able to invite agencies to come on those days and, and, and answer the questions for us. And that'll help us with our decision-making that has to be done pretty quickly, or at least our recommendations that we'll give to our board. So um, we won't have every agency come. It really will just be those that we're, we've got some questions and we uh, just wanna make sure we, we understand clearly. Then on October 24th, our ETOS uh, board meets and discusses uh, the applications and um, sort of the what the committee's um, thoughts are around the applications. November 21st, the ETOS board will meet. Members will review the draft budget, which would include um, those applicants that, that the board is considering. And at that time, I believe, Georgia, you might have to correct me. Is that where they, um, and, oh, maybe Tom, is that where we then um, approve each application and have the board vote on them? Or is that the final in December? Last year, they were ready at that initial October meeting. Um, on, they They had all the information they needed and they, was it or was it November, Tom? But whatever they they met one time, they reviewed everything, they approved everything, and they approved the budget, which was kind of a surprise. We hadn't been expecting that, so I would I would encourage you guys to come to all those meetings because if they're ready to move on quickly, it could happen earlier. Typically, I think it would happen in December fifth, but yes, I do remember that in November. It was like we're ready, and so everything took place. So I'm not sure that everybody 
was expecting that. So yeah, please come to all those meetings. That'd be great. At least these two, these three. <laughs> Any questions on the timeline? I had a clarification question. So you're saying as, as applicants, we could come to those, um, the meetings you just listed. You can come to any, any, any of it, I believe. So I, I think okay. everything is open. Okay. Um, and then can I ask a budget question too? Um, well, one, I know it says in the letter to, you know, share how much funding that you will be requesting and then how it's going to be used. Um, and is that an estimate or does that need to be our exact budget? I think an estimate is, is, is fine. I think okay. that that's fine. I think as, as you go on and write the full application, you'll see um, all the data that's needed around money and, and may find some tweaking that you need to do, so. Okay, and then um, our institution will ask about like indirect. Do you guys have that in there like as a cap or that you do or don't pay those or how that works? Um, say that again? Indirect cost, do you guys have oh. something? where it talks about a cap or you do or don't pay those or the, within the funding application there's a few things that we don't pay for or the policies um you might check there but then i'm going to have tom speak to this because he's our money guy <laughs> okay yeah Thanks. yeah i i think generally we're we're not going to um pay pay a a, a specific line indirect costs if you want to if you want to um select you know office supplies or some other areas and come up with a an allocation method that's reasonable uh, we'll consider that but um, okay it, did, it usually when we go through like i'm from k med center and so like we go through our institution though that's an item on there but if the funder says they are not going to pay for it or there's a cap or something then then they won't you know make it so I'll, i can follow up on that thank you okay. definitely don't think that we have any hard fast rules around that but um um, there are some things specifically we won't pay for, and then um, maybe we'll try to get some clarification for you before. I hope um, to type up some of these questions and, and get clearer answers for folks after this, so um, I'll try to do that. I have a question, Tracy. I'm not sure who to address it to, but have you guys considered or will this year um, the payment process be different or is that the same? Are we gonna still provide you with all the individuals and how many units and all that kind of stuff? Or would it be, you know, you say that you're gonna fund X amount of dollars and you divide that by 12? I think that, um, I don't have an answer on that. I think that there's been some real benefits to seeing what the individuals, um, are getting. Um, if we can come up with a way where we can still see what the service that people are getting. Um, but I'm going to kind of leave that up to Georgie, Tom, that's more in their wheelhouse to decide. I know that we were updating the application process. I don't think that we addressed updating the ongoing payment process. But we can certainly have a discussion about that with our board and see if there's anything they want different. In the meantime, I would assume it's just going to be the same as it has been in previous years. Okay, thank you. I I will tell you that we're working on a, when I say we're working, we're starting on a process to sort of make that billing and everything work a little smoother. It's going to take some time. Maybe that will help resolve some of the issues that we've had. Um, I do I do understand that in for providers, that is kind of a hardship, especially when you have a lot of snow days and things like that for some. Um, so we, we can discuss it. Thank you. Any general questions about any of um, this process? And you know, if you don't want to do that right now, ask anything right now, feel free to contact us right after this meeting if you want. Um, but no question is a dumb question, I promise. I, I have a question. Um, 
it's it's about the eligibility or are we gonna wait to get there or is it just a, is this just an open forum now for questions? Oh, feel free. Go right ahead. In, in regards to eligibility, we you know talk about clinical authorities that 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 deem that an individual has a developmental disability in which ETOS funds. Uh, I, and I just could notice it has special education. And in, a lot of times you'll have a cell contained, which typically serve specific individuals that have developmental, developmental disabilities, but in special education, there's also um, resource classroom and cross cat classrooms, which typically many of folks may not actually have a developmental disability. But the question is, does ETOS looking at funding individuals that take part in services with primarily have a developmental disability or can they have uh, another diagnosis, so to speak, primary and developmental disability as a secondary? I, I know our um, where this comes up a lot is those with mental health diagnosis and developmental yep. disabilities, right? Yep. Have to have a primary developmental disability. There you go. Um, and so, but I, that said, we have started using the um, Kansas City Regional Office for eligibility. So if they say someone is eligible, then they're eligible um, because they have determined that that the developmental disability is primary. Yeah, that's what I had assumed, but it's just, you know, as, as uh, individuals that inquire about services and so forth, uh, we just want to make sure that we're, uh, you know, that, that hey, you know, look, really check out KCRO. Yeah, and there are, and, and, and I'm not saying that people have to use KCRO uh, just for this determination. So we can take collateral like IEPs and we can pull information from that to determine we have someone here that can okay. dig into that if we need to. Great. Uh, for, for someone specific, there are those um, situations that, like a traumatic brain injury, um, looking and seeing like what was the date of the injury. Like those are real. There's just some specific things we have to look for sometimes, and we do have someone here that's really good at that kind of thing, so it can help differentiate. Great. Thanks. So I have a question um, under your transportation priority. Um, you know, it states creation of a volunteer driver program. So as I'm looking, and I'm looking at different aspects of that also, if we're in the process um, of creating, I mean, during that 2024 year, is that something you would consider like bringing people together and the outcome might not be there like the first six months of having, six months of having it in place, but that creation, does that count during that time? If we, you know, is that something we can, um, put together that action plan and that and and share with you or is it something you want ready to go you know the first of 2024 I see what you're, so I think I know a little bit about what Kelly's talking about here and that does talk about is it is a, a collaboration effort to try to uh, assist with transportation in Jackson County so um I I think for this funding process we would kind of want to see what what would it look like financially what we would um you would need if you have a separate um, thing that you would like to meet about just to discuss and then us figure out like what is the next step is it applying for the funding now is it that six months into the year we have a little bit of money set aside which we've been doing for the last few years to to help start something um when, so when someone comes up with something creative we have done those kinds of things so um definitely reach out we can have we can have a meeting and decide like is that something you do now or is that what? later? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I and, and Kelly's saying that really makes it makes me think about something I wanted to say here is that partnership for us is critical. Like the relationship we have with you is so important. The relationship you guys have with each other is so important. So if if collaboration to do a funding uh, proposal makes sense between a few agencies, um, we are open to that. Like we really, we wanna see that we're all working together as a team to support people um, the best way possible. So I've always loved how uh, we've all gotten along in our, in our group and I uh, just wanna encourage us to like can keep working together.
Um, as far as the submission goes, let me talk about that for just a second. There, right below all those documents, there's um, a way to submit the documents electronically. I don't begin to understand how it works, but it's going to end up in a file I can get in. <laughs> so all you'll do is put all your information in, of course, and then you can up upload your files here. I think from what I understand is you could have this really large file and we can still accept it. It'll still go through. So if for those who like pictures and letters, <laughs> I think it'll still accept a few. So. And if you have any trouble with that at all, please reach out. We can accept them another way if needed. Just let us know so we can make sure and look for that. What else? Just to clarify, as far as content for the letter, it's mostly just addressing those questions um, above mm -hmm. the, you know, insert text here. Yep. Okay. Of course, I have the wrong thing pulled up. So, yeah. So, so that, yeah, that paragraph um, above is really the information we want. Um, you don't have to get into really nitty gritty details about the, the money that you want to ask for and things like that. We really want to understand the, the heart of what you're doing and what, what you're wanting to do and those details around, around that. Oh, hello. How many times am I going to download the same form? So yes. It looks pretty straightforward. You know I'm gonna bug you. So <laughs> once yeah. I get into it, I'll be like, SOS Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> you are all welcome to do that. <laughs> we'll help however we can. Anything else before we Tracy, um, uh, I was just going to mention uh, in relation to the earlier question about indirect costs, we we have in the past had a line on the on the budget, uh, the application budget for an administrative allocation of up to ten percent of the direct costs, um, and I don't I don't see that changing. So if you've got if you've got an indirect cost rate that's that's established, then up up to ten percent, we we'd accept that. Thank you so much. I knew you had an answer, Tom. Thank you. Well, I'm well, gonna take like everybody's had all their questions answered, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> just just a quick follow up uh, to Tom's just um previous comment about the indirect. Tom is the when you say approved indirect are you referring to a federally approved indirect or previously approved indirect with EATOS? Um I was referring to a, a federal uh, okay. approval. We're we're not, we're not in the business of of uh of uh, approving information like that through your audit. So going to have to have somebody else that's signed off on it. All right. I guess I'm going to take silence as everyone has all their questions answered and it's all good. But please, please, please know that you've got, you can get any kind of help you need. Okay, thank you all, and we will see you later. Bye.